Hi there, everyone. Um, so this is for the geometry classes. We're going to be concentrating on section 9-1 out of the textbook. Um, this is the introductory chapter to coordinate geometry. We've actually been doing this more or less for the entire school year, um, but this specific chapter is one where we kind of do some more focused study on it. We take some previous algebraic ideas that we've had and we combine them uh, with a lot of the properties that we learned when we were working with triangles and when we were working with quadrilaterals. Um, we need to review three of the formulas that we had from earlier in the year. The first one is the distance formula. The distance formula is distance is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2 quantity squared plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared. We take the square root of that. Use that to find the distance between two points in the rectangular coordinate system. The next thing that we will need is the slope formula. The slope formula, so slope is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Okay. Let me zoom this in just a tiny bit for us and make it just a little bit clearer, hopefully. There we go. All right, so we've got our distance formula. We have our slope formula. And the last formula that we need to go over is the midpoint formula. All right, the midpoint formula, the midpoint, I use MP for this when I do it. So the midpoint is given by the formula x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So it creates an ordered pair for us when we use this coordinate, or when we use this formula. So those are your three primary formulas. Um, we'll be using those pretty extensively uh, here for about the next week or so as we work through um, our various topics in uh, coordinate geometry. Make sure you have these written down. I'll kind of give you guys an idea of when we'll be using these, um, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Um, I want to concentrate on examples. It's probably the easiest way to do this. And you have to kind of think back to our various shapes that we've learned about and some of the properties that are connected to them uh, as far as uh, when you will use which um, which which uh, which formula you're going to use. Um, the first two I will tell you that we will use predominantly are going to be the distance formula, the slope formula, and then you will need the midpoint formula for something that we're going to do in the next lesson that deals something called the centroid. So we'll deal with that in the next lesson. I'm going to switch the video over and we're going to take a look at an example. All right, let's do an example real quick. So. I'm using GeoGebra here, so we have a triangle. This is example one on page 385 is where I got this triangle from. I'm going to modify this example a little bit, that way you guys can get a feel for the kind of questions that you will be doing um, in the homework, and then I'll ask you guys to do later on in different assessments and stuff. Um, this particular, uh, in the example, all they ask us to do is to find the, the lengths of the various side lengths, which is something you guys should be able to do already. I want to pose a more difficult question to you, and that is what type of triangle is this? We have three types of triangles. We have the isosceles triangle, where two side lengths are equal to each other. We have um, an equilateral triangle, where all three side lengths are equal to each other. And the third type, which we didn't talk about, is something called a scalene triangle. A scalene triangle, none of the side lengths are equal to each other. So we want to figure out which type we have here. We can tell just by looking at it that this is not an equilateral triangle. Uh, this side length B here is just obviously longer than the other two, so it's not equilateral. It's possible it's isosceles. A and C, um, apparent, uh, they look fairly similar. It's possible this is isosceles. So we're going to check that. In order for these two side lengths to be, uh, or for this triangle to be isosceles, these two side lengths would have to have the same measurement. In order for them to have the same measurement, the distance from BC and the distance from BA would need to be equal. So we need to use the distance formula for this. So let me switch back here. So I write down these points here. A is the point 1C, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the point A is 1, 6, the point B is 3, 1, and the point C is 8, 3. Make sure you write down these points for the next part. Um, we need to calculate two distances here. So I have my points all written down here. I need the length BC. I need the length AB. Um, I'm going to set up um, 
I'm going to set up the distance for, formula for BC, and then I'm going to have you guys do the um, do the second uh, do the second one on your own and calculate both side lengths and see if they're equal. I'll speed up the video when I'm doing the arithmetic, and uh, you guys just uh, pause it if need be or whatnot, and we'll uh, we'll pick up after we have an answer for both of them. We can determine our conclusion as to whether this triangle ABC is scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. So for BC, the distance is going to be equal to the square root of the uh, let's see here the differences of the uh, of the x values so it's going to be 3 minus 8 squared plus the difference of the y values so this will be 1 minus 3 squared okay and we need to simplify that out you'll do the same thing over here for um, for a b as well I'm going to speed up the video at this point and uh, you guys just check your work at the end and we'll see if we end up with the same answer All right, so we did all of our work here. B, C, and A, B, we calculate them all the way out, and we end up with a square root of 29 for both of them. This comes out to some decimal if you uh, stick it into your calculator and, uh, and, uh, and work it out. It doesn't matter. We'll just leave this in what we call radical form. You guys will see this a lot next year when you're in Algebra 2. So we get the square root of 29 for both of them. That means these two side lengths are equal. And if they are equal, that means we have two side lengths that are congruent. Therefore, the triangle A, B, C is isosceles. All right, that's the kind of questions you guys are going to be seeing here. We're going to do one more here. I'm going to do one with a trapezoid so that you guys can see how the uh, slope line or the slope formula is uh, used to uh, is used in uh, coordinate geometry problems. All right, here we go. We have another example this time. This time we have a trapezoid. We have these coordinates. Point A or vertex A will be at 4, 3. B will be at 1, 5. C will be at 7, 8, and D will be at 6, 4. So when we graph that, we end up with this trapezoid, or at least we think it's a trapezoid. We know it's at least a quadrilateral. We've got four sides to it. We're not 100% sure if it's a trapezoid right now. Uh, if you think back to our definition of a trapezoid, a trapezoid is exactly one pair of parallel lines, Okay, which means the other two side lengths can't be parallel. So. Theoretically, just looking at this here, we can tell that B and D are not parallel. The question is, are C and what is this here? This is going to be, this is B and D, so this is A. So C and A, or the question is, are C and A parallel? So we need to find out if the segment BC and the segment AD are parallel. Now, we think back to our algebra and our linear functions uh, that we did. Uh, in order for two lines to be parallel, they must have the same slope. So we're going to use the slope formulas, and we're going to calculate these two slopes, and we'll, uh, we'll find out if they have the same slope. If they have the same slope, then they are parallel, and then this is, in fact, a trapezoid as opposed to just some random quadrilateral. Okay, So we go back here. We have our points. I'm looking for the slope between B and C and the slope between A and D. Okay, I'm going to speed up the video. You guys go ahead and stick everything into the slope formula and see what values you guys get. All right, there we go. So we calculated our two slopes here. So we've got segment BC and segment AD. We found the slopes. The slopes both worked out to one half. So those two segments, BC and AD here, this segment and this segment here, these two lines are parallel, which means, uh, and I'm sorry, so these two lines are parallel, these two sides are parallel, and B and D are not parallel, so this is a trapezoid. So we have confirmed that this structure is a trapezoid. That's how most of these problems are going to go in this section for you guys. You're going to be given a shape, you guys will plot them on graph paper, and then you'll be asked to confirm or check some various properties. So um, you guys will need to reference prior notes, take a look at what you guys know about various quadrilaterals like kites and parallelograms and trapezoids and everything we know about triangles. Um, there's also some questions in here that just deal with uh, with general par uh, general parallel lines. So you'll come back to um, parallel line relationships uh, and transversals. So you guys will look at all those. So we take all the, all the content and properties from the shapes we've learned before. We're going to tie them all together. There's going to be a lot of graphing in this section and a lot of calculation. And uh, this will lead you guys to, to some interesting little uh, algebra relationships uh, based upon the geometric ideas that we've been working with. 
All right. Um, the next video, I'm going to go over something called the centroid, and we'll talk about the midpoint, um, the midpoint of a side length in that video, um, and that'll lead into your guys' next assignment. The book assignment for this section on 9-1 will be found on my backpack, so you guys will need to look there for the exact problems. All right. I'll see you guys next class.